Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is the set input mode nodes. We're actually going to be covering three different nodes today. It's going to be these three nodes here. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, we're going to start off without anything hooked up, and we're just going to play our normal map. Now my map has a little character in the middle that I can control. It's a little third person character, as well as a user interface that right now I can't control. By default, the game is set, if you don't do anything, to game mode only. That means your player, or your controller, or your pawn, or your character is going to get the input, do something with it, and then absorb it if you tell it to do something with it. Now by absorbing it and doing something with it, this is what I mean. This is a map of the default input processing procedure for Unreal Engine. The input comes in, then it goes to the player input mapping. This is where you set up your input, such as if I hit A, it means to go left, or spacebar means jump. And to show you that, let's just, this is what I mean by that, right here, down here. This is your input mapping. So it goes from the player's keyboard or mouse input into here. Now after that's done, it's going to go into the first input enabled actor. And by input enabled actor, what they mean by that, assuming I can find my thing again, there we go, is going to be an actor. Let's say we have our generic character here. And over in our generic character, we have some class settings and we have some class defaults. And under input, you can have auto receive input turned on. This means the input is going to come here automatically. By default, it's disabled. But if we had something that we wanted to take over input, say maybe an input manager itself and not the character, you might want to turn this on. And then you can set the priority based on how high and when it should come in. So after that, then it goes to your player controller. Now your player controller does whatever it needs to do and anything it doesn't handle goes to the level blueprint. After that, it goes to the pawn and then all of this input is passed over to the game logic. So this right here, if you've ever tried to accept input from something like a actor you just threw in and you didn't enable it, this would be why it was ignored. And this is why your controller and your characters, your pawns, automatically accept input because they're designed to. So this is important to know. Why is it important to know? When you have your input set up to like the UI, the input is not designed to go to the UI. The input's designed to go to that chain and stack that we just saw. And that is why your UI, by default, doesn't do anything when you type in things. So I will show that shortly. So we showed that when we play, we have our game mode input. Now by game mode input, I mean, let's hook this up and we'll hook it into the set input mode game only. If we type in set input mode, we will find the three different types. Game only, which is our default. UI only, which means the player or the character in the pawn do not get input. And then game and UI, which means both will take input. So by input mode game only, if we run this, you'll find, well, nothing will change. We're going to have everything working properly. Now there is one small caveat here, and I'll have to show that in a second. Let me hook up another node called show mouse cursor. And by default, I have it set to on. Show mouse cursor is what enables us to have our mouse cursor moving. And as you can see, I'm moving my mouse cursor, but my character is no longer moving by default when I move my mouse. I can click on my buttons though. Now this is not a hybrid mode. This is game mode, which means my input for my keyboard is going to the game and my mouse is able to move at the same time. But I have a mouse input access, if we can find it in our character right here for my input access for turning that allows me to rotate my character around in them that is being ignored because the mouse cursor is absorbing that turning hopefully i can cover some common examples you're going to run into when you're trying to set up and do certain input types so i'm going to try to cover them all in as much detail as possible so if you want to show your mouse cursor and you want the controller, the character to move, you do not want to do something like this. This is not the appropriate thing. 
for the most part, when you have game only turned on, you do not want to have the mouse cursor turned on. So let's go ahead and shut that off. Now here's something that's important. Each one of these inputs has a target as their default input. They're always going to have one. As you notice, game only only has one. That should be the player controller who you want to set the input for. And that's important. If you don't have something set up in there, you're going to have issues, especially with these two. So even though we'll run without anything plugged in, you always want to make sure you do plug in your player controller, especially in a multiplayer game, or you're going to have issues. Maybe one person is going into their user interface, and you're switching over the input, but you don't specify the player controller, and now you've completely changed someone else's input. So it's always important. Make sure you plug in your player controller to your input mode. And you'll notice we now have appropriate game input mode. So our next common one is going to be our UI only. UI only, and let's make, well, I'll plug this in, in a second to show you. But UI only basically defaults to the user interface taking the input. Now you'll notice I can still move around. Well, the issue for that is we never told which player controller to set this input mode for. We have to set the player controller so that way we now have input. Now, if I use my arrows, they are no longer being absorbed by the player. I have set the UI to take any input. But you'll also notice I'm moving my mouse around the screen, and when it's outside of here, you can see it. When it's inside, you can't see it. If I move over the buttons, if you look at the top left, the player 2 toggle will highlight on and off, and I can actually click on it. And now I actually can see, oh, now it's gone again and it's gone. It's now inside of my game view. It's no longer part of the UI. And what's the reason for that? Also, it's a pain in the butt to get your mouse back once you do that. So let's try to go back to our game and stop it. There we go. So the reason for that is you haven't actually shown your mouse cursor. That's what this is for right here. Show mouse cursor. When I do this and play, now I have a mouse cursor. Now I can click anywhere, inside or outside, or on any element. And the UI itself is the only thing that's going to take the input. Now if I move my arrow keys, my character no longer moves, and my mouse look no longer works. All input is being absorbed by the UI, none of it is being given to the player controller. So, while all of these controls are in the player controller, remember our input stack, now that we are ignoring the player controller, none of these controls are working. So for example, let's say you had a control that opened your main menu by hitting the I key for inventory. And you find that when you're in your user interface, the I key no longer works. Well, the I key no longer works because your player character is no longer absorbing the input. It's going directly to your UI. Now, handling input in the UI for keyboards is a completely different video. But basically, you have some keyboard input handlers in the UI that you can use. You can also do things such as passing input from the UI to the player, so that way your player can still handle it. Or we can use our third input mode, which I'll cover shortly. Let's finish up this one first. So the two options we have, we have lock mouse to viewport and in widget to focus. Let's go ahead and lock the mouse to viewport and we'll go ahead and play this. And what you'll find is when I move my mouse, I can no longer escape the screen. It is locked to my viewport that this widget is being displayed on. That is important. You can have multiple widgets, and if you have, let's say, a multiplayer game, and you have a different UI for each player, maybe on the same screen, you might want to lock that input only to one screen. So as you can see, let's shut this off. Uncheck this and hit play. My mouse is not constrained. I can go anywhere. And let's go ahead and shut this off. And we'll go ahead and check it and hit play. And now my mouse is constrained to the screen. Now one thing you need to keep in mind, because my UI is taking it and I'm not clicking on anything, my escape button no longer lets me out. And since I'm locked to the viewport, I can't click. So if you do something, for example, such as Alt-Tab to get back out, and then you come back, you'll break free. Or one of the traditional ways is just Alt-F4 when you're actually playing and you can close down your current window. In widget to focus. This basically takes a widget reference. Now it's not going to be a widget class. It's going to be a widget reference. It's going to be a created widget, something we actually have in our screen. So I can do this one, for example. 
and it's going to focus any input to that widget. Now if I hit play, you're not really going to see any difference here. And the reason for that is I only technically have one widget playing. What you would use the in widget focus for is, let me pull up a widget. And let's go ahead and let's pull up the button, for example. So let's say I had this button somewhere else. Now you notice this button has an on clicked event. If this widget doesn't have focus, this widget will never register the on click button happening automatically. You're going to have to click on the button. That'll give the button focus and then click on the button again in order for the button to trigger. The focus is basically the default that will happen when any input goes on. So for example, let's say I had this button and I wanted this button to trigger when I hit the space bar. If my focus when I start up the game is nothing and I hit the space bar, nothing is going to take the input. If this bar down here, because this is actually a bunch of buttons down, well, I think it's images, but let's say this has focus and it was buttons. If I made this my focus, I could hit the one, two, three, four, five key, maybe make this a little hot bar. But if this had focus my chat box and I typed in the one key, this is not going to fire. We're going to get text over here. So think of it kind of like your hybrid user interface. You have a chat box here, some action buttons here. Maybe a main menu button or something over here, and you have a map over here. Whatever you want to take your input, your keyboard input, your mouse input, you want to make focus. So that is what our in widget to focus is for. Let's go ahead and look at our last version. This is going to be set input mode game and UI. Let's unhook this and uncheck everything. It's going to be pretty much the same. You see our in widget to focus, and you see our lock mouse to viewport. We have one additional option, and I'll show you that in a second. We'll go ahead and run this. Now my mouse allows my character to move, and my arrows allow me to move properly. So it seems like it's the same thing as a game mode. Well, the difference is if you have the mouse cursor enabled. If we enable our mouse cursor and turn it on, now you'll notice I can move with my arrows, and I have user interface. I can toggle on and off. So I actually can move and have user interface, and you'll notice if I hold my right mouse button, I'll get mouse look. Now the issue here is I'm being stopped by the corners. That's because I have the mouse still enabled. If I hide mouse cursor during capture, and I go ahead and hit play, I can move, I can click, but if I hold down the right mouse button, whoops, I need to... Okay, so yeah, this is actually a good, it, this is actually something good to point out. So you notice how I said it's locked and it should have worked and it didn't. Now I'm going to spend an hour trying to figure out why how my hide mouse cursor during capture didn't work. Or we can remember the first rule I said when you set up an input. Make sure you set your player controller up. Now if we go ahead and play, I can move, I can hold the right mouse button and it disappears. Since the mouse button, button is no mouse cursor is no longer showed, it's no longer constrained by my viewport, I get complete 360 vertical and horizontal on the rotation, I let go of the mouse button, I get my stuff back, I can start clicking on things again. So for example, if this was like an MMO, like your World of Warcraft, this is a traditional mixed interface. You have your arrow for clicking on things, activating buttons, toggling things, you can move with your character traditionally, strafing and forward, and you'd hold the right mouse button to give you what's known as mouse look. And of course the mouse buttons I'm using are completely configurable because they are simply my input here. And that is what your set input mode game and UI. It's your mixed interface. And like it says here, the UI responds to user input. If the UI doesn't handle input, the player controller gets a chance. So that's something to keep in mind. So in this example where we're running, we might have this focused, for example, and we would have the widget listening for keys, and we have these bound to like the first one bound slot bound to one, two, three. It's going to listen to the input one, two, three, 
if this doesn't handle it, it's going to go ahead and pass it along to the user, the player, the character and the player and the pawn, and the controller, and then the controller is going to handle it. So you could have a mixed mode state. If they're in the user interface, it handles one thing. If not, it passes it down. So that's why this is working. I hit my W key. The user interface gets a chance to do something with it. It did not handle it. It passes it down to my player. My player says, oh, W means forward, and I move forward. That's why when I click on things, like here, if you notice when I click in the user interface, it's being absorbed and I can move. But if I click on the buttons, these buttons, these images, these are absorbing the input with my left click, whereas the blank space, even this is, this is partially transparent and it's not set up to absorb input. So it's going to go ahead and pass it along to my character. So that's going to be your set input mode game and UI. And if I uncheck this to show mouse cursor, we run it, you'll notice it's going to react appropriately. I can move. I'm moving my mouse even though you can't see it. I'm looking. But we have the issue where if we're not showing the mouse cursor, we're not going to be able to actually, there we go. Now I can see it again. I can click on a button. If I move, now the game's going to absorb input. So keep that in mind. If you want the mouse cursor shown, use your show mouse cursor option. If you don't want it shown, don't use your show mouse cursor option. That's important. If you want your game input only, make sure you set the appropriate input. So that's going to cover that up. Let's wrap that up. Input mode game only is our default. The game takes the input. The user interface gets none. Input mode UI only. The user interface takes the input. The game does not get a chance to get input. So controls, menus, options, inputs in your character or player controller will not see input unless you do something fancy like pass it along. Input mode game and UI. The UI takes the input. Any input the UI doesn't handle gets passed along to the game. So it's your hybrid. Make sure you always plug in your player controller or you'll get slightly confused like I did. And make sure you show or hide the mouse cursor if you need to show or hide the mouse cursor. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below.